welcome to MBS show episode number 315. I am your host Norman Sanzo and joining me today is my man Daniel Anthony. Good day to you Norman. It's great to be on again. Yep, it's great to be on and I have to say that welcome to the new Malaysia. Oh yes. For those of you who haven't heard, first change of government in 61 years, the air never felt so fresh. Yep, yep, yep. It's a new beginning for Malaysia. And yes, indeed. for people who've got no idea what we're talking about, like Dan mentioned earlier on, Malaysia never had any change in government, even though we had elections. So for 61 years, Malaysia has been under the same government. So now, we've changed. So we're excited to see where this goes. Very yeah, excited. it's going to be quite a... It's going to be quite a interesting next five years under this new government. So let's just see what happens. Yeah, we'll we'll see where it goes. Uh, as long as it doesn't hurt the ponies, I'm all good. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, if if you put it that way, like how our Himpunan Hijau chief Wong Tak was uh, defeated a long-standing foe in Bentong Pahang. You know, he's a he's a big time super environmentalist guy. So if you're worried about animals and the environment you know you've got a you've got a friend in the they want racket right now <laughs> yeah so they're just happy uh right in but anyway um besides the uber news that um government has changed and whatnot oh i i have to extend a congratulations to dr tun mahathir mohammed who is the party leader was it he is the party leader and as of now the seventh prime minister of malaysia Fun fact for you guys who do not know or did not know, he was also the fifth prime minister of Malaysia. Fourth, fourth, fourth. He was the fourth, fifth uh, was Pak Lah. All right, so fourth, um, prime minister. So, um, you could see that he is a regular Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> well, he had all sorts of nicknames prior to the polls. They called him uh, the Tunminator. That was my favorite one <laughs> because he was all be back, and indeed he is back. <laughs> Uh, and for the record, he is ninety two, going ninety three years old. Like, wow! Mm-hmm. I know people. He say... is actually, as of now, the world's oldest democratically elected leader. You true that, and I, I know people say that you're old. Give the youngins their chance. You take a break and whatnot. You should deserve a rest. He did the rest thing, and look where it brought us. Uh, you want to talk about giving the youngins a chance? Um, this election also was historic because we have the youngest uh parliamentarian elected in national history, who was in the constituency of Bat of Batu in Kuala Lumpur. He's twenty two years old. Hmm. Wow, that's impressive. I personally don't really like the idea of having a millennial in parliament, but that's my silly opinion. <laughs> Why they're going to complain about their Java chip not being cool enough? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, the Wi-Fi can't connect, <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Um, We're a pony podcast, we're not a political one or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, um, we're going to really back. The only political thing we're going to say is either Celestia, Luna, Twilight, or Cadence. So, those are only four um, yes, pony uh, things you're going to talk uh, about. And Equestria needs a change of government. <laughs> uh... <laughs> the current government is okay. <laughs> Uh, but anyway. It's okay, but let's make it great again. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. So, um, with all these shenanigans that you were talking about, um, you mentioned to me AirAsia had to, um, well, not really had, but they colored their planes to blue to support the previous government and whatnot. So, yeah, that, that uh, yeah, was... um, that was a kind of a slip up. They had they, the they um AirAsia painted one of their aircraft blue and had the previous government slogan which was Hebat Kandagaraku or Make My Country Great Again. Uh no, Make My Country Greater, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh that plane has been repainted. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean Back to red. Well you know what's red? And white at the same time too? Um part of our flag. True, but I was more thinking of Japan because my little pony cafe opens in Japan. Exclusive comic covers, merch and more. So a while back, if you didn't notice, uh, there's a My Little Pony cafe in Japan. And now that it's open and whatnot, we have some uh, Japanese bronies who took pictures of the location and even swags. Like they're selling coasters, patches, purses, um, candies, and exclusive Japanese comics. So, wow, that is awesome. We got the good stuff. <laughs> 
What? Comics or? I mean, Japan, they get the good stuff. I mean, general, like, big new, um, when was the last time you saw this amount of merch being introduced into the market? Like MLP official merch. It was, they're usually toys in Toys R Us or, you know, the comics come out in their regular schedule. But now you're seeing this big new bunch, like a whole new collection. It's quite exciting. It's just a pity that it's only available there. Oh, yeah, true. I mean, but at the same time, too, um, I'm looking here and stuff like, okay, for the candies, that's available here. For the toys, there's a TY toy. And the purses, like, yeah, that that's somewhere, I guess. I, I don't know. Patches, you know. Most oh, you of, mean the, you mean not all of these are exclusive? Only the, the only exclusive thing I can see here is just the Japanese comic books. That's about it. Oh, okay, I see, I see. Because I thought I thought a lot of them were exclusive, so I was like, wait, what the heck? Yeah, we, we do have them. Um, either Toys R Us or Aeon is going to bring them in or not. That's the thing. Okay. But still, I do like this. Like, this is cool. This is cool. Like, Japan going on the bandwagon for the pony things. Yeah. More Japanese ponies. Yeah. Okay. Japan gets all the good stuff. Yeah, true, true. But I'm being salty as I always am. Yeah, I'm salty too, man. I'm salty too. You know that most of the good figures, like the Guardians of Harmony figures, they we, we don't get them. Somehow Thailand does, but we don't. Yeah, I mean, I have no idea why. Even back when MLP the musical kind of aired around this region, uh, Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines, but no here. Uh, Singapore as well, but not yeah. here. <sighs> Hasbro! Know, What's going on? You, you no know Hasbro, bro. You know Hasbro. But anywho, um, from Japan, let's hit to somewhere closer to that location, Russia and Korea. It appears that their McDonald's have exclusive pony and transformer toys. For the Happy Meals. And from the looks of it, these are chibi ponies and they're really cute. See, they got chibi right this time. The last time they tried chibi, don't forget G3.5. Oh god, no. So oh, see, they got god, it right no. this time and I'm happy for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, um, if you guys want to know how they look like, click on the link in the show notes and it's there. They're, I, I think this was at the Toy Fair in New York once. And they show them the kind of, you know... Uh, sh- the design. Yeah. And I- I'm looking at this here and I'm wondering, like, there's eight of them right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there- there's eight toys. So I'm guessing uh, one week you'll get two toys, something like that? Um, I'm not so sure how... <laughs> McDonald's over there kind of does their, you know, I don't know if they do the whole deal with boys toy, girls toy kind of thing, or they fuse it all together. Mm. I think they did it with the Transformers, right? I think it's the boys toys, girls toys kind of deal, but I think one week you have four options to having, uh, okay, you want Applejack or Rainbow Dash kind of scenario. Ah, right. That makes sense. And when I say eight, look at the picture there, and who's there? You got Twilight, Rainbow Dash, Rarity, Fluttershy, Pinky, Applejack, Spike, and Starlight Glimmer. What? Is Spike is the Spike is the interesting addition because I don't think they've done other than ponies in their previous lines. Yeah, like um, well, besides Starlight here, which is a really welcome addition, Spike is a new one. Like it's usually she's the government, you don't say no to Starlight. <laughs> Stop that! She's not like that anymore. <laughs> Okay. You... Yeah, just like our current leader, but let's, let's watch... <laughs> go watch the previous episode. That was fun. Okay, uh, parent troubles. Parent troubles. <clears throat> but anywho, uh... but hmm, what, what I kind of also kinda really like about this is Spike is taller than Princess Twilight. Like, mm, it's, okay. the camera pushes, uh, the camera hides, um, makes you higher, man. The camera makes you higher. No, wait, you, by that logic, he's taller than Optimus Prime. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Uh, but still, uh, toys for Russia and Korea. That's awesome. I wish we get it here. Uh, but I heard that because you want me, you can go. You can you can try your luck in North Korea. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. We, we don't, <laughs> okay, we fine. don't joke. We don't joke. That's 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 too soon, and we got no idea how that's gonna go. Yeah. Well, he's Kim's gonna be in Singapore in a couple of weeks. You can ask him. Don't <laughs> know. No, no. no. <laughs> so anywho, um, that that is the news for this week. It's a pretty slow week for news. Yeah. There's one news that revolves around season 8's ender and nah man I ain't gonna talk about that that's just so spoiling yeah that's spoiling ahead of time like no fun 
So anyway, um, that's the news for this week. So let's head on to my favorite topic of the show, which is what have you been doing for a week? So Dan, um, it's I'm guessing your week has been really interesting. It has been one of the craziest weeks of my life. Yes, it has been amazing. The ups were high, the downs were oh my god. And you know, it's just uh, this week was nothing like how I planned it out to be because I was thinking Wednesday night. Uh, status quo is retained Thursday morning I wake up I go to work and life goes on that was not the case <laughs> because after the change of government it was it was quite it was unpredictable and even Tun Mahathir also <laughs> said it himself and uh, if I'm not mistaken one of the news uh, journalists asked him uh, how do you feel about this and uh, how are you going to go about this change of government he replied well we've never done this before and it was a joke but it was it was the truth. We've never had a change of power. And everything you're seeing being done right now in, in Malaysia, especially in Putrajaya, is uncharted territory. So even in the office right now, in, in the newsroom, it's just every day is a new adventure, a new surprise. Something suddenly pops out of the blue and oh my God, it's it, it, it's something you've never seen before. Uh, you said it's new adventure. That reminds me of the G3 song. <laughs> But honestly, the the thing the things that this uh, election has taken as true is just it's just amazing. It's just that you, you you've got <clears throat> an incoming government, but at the same time, we've never you know we focus a lot of attention on on covering an incoming government, but we've also had to take time to focus on the outgoing government as to you know um, the ruling party in Malaysia, the United Malays National Organization or AMNO. They um, it was the first time they experienced defeat in history. And it was a very awkward position for them because yesterday, Friday, 11th May, that was Amno's 72nd anniversary. Ooh, ouch. Yeah, Ow. it, was, it, 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 it hurt for them, you know, to Ooh. celebrate their anniversary in the light of their first ever defeat. Why does this song, why, why, why does uh, All American Reject plays in my head right now? <laughs> And uh, to to make things worse is that you know we had we had um, people turn up there we had big important people uh, former Prime Minister Abdullah Badawi um, Tun, uh, not Mahathir wasn't there of course uh, Najib Razak was there along with his deputy and uh, Najib just left without saying a word he didn't give a speech and it was so unlike anything we've ever seen before and uh, I mean of course we've been to events where politicians get up and leave without speaking to the press that's nothing new but for the former Prime Minister, Najib, who was, you know, on, on Tuesday night, he gave a powerful sounding, not very powerful in content, if you ask me, um, mandate speech. And suddenly he's so quiet. He's just suddenly become this quiet person. And, you know, you think it's over. You think it's all done. This morning they blacklisted his passport. But it, And then the bombshell drops again in the afternoon when he resigned from his post as AMNO president. So, you know, the... the you you think that it's over. You think that, okay, finally we're going to simmer down to daily life. No, something new happens. Something new just throws up and comes up in your face. News life sounds so, busy, man. <laughs> it, it It's unpredictable. Like, um, it's getting to this point. Like today, I had nothing to do for about a couple of hours in the office. But because in the afternoon, we were eagerly waiting for uh, the announcement that was to be made by Mahathir about forming a new cabinet. And also the fact that Najib called a press conference. We were all waiting in the in the newsroom that to the point that none of us went for lunch. We called pizza. <laughs> and uh, we were just sitting in the office waiting for something to happen. And it didn't <laughs> until much later. But, um, you know, we were all concentrated at that time. And then from like 3.30 onwards, it was like an hour of... Wow. So it's becoming very irregular and unpredictable. And uh, yeah, the next few weeks is probably going to be very disruptive especially with uh, the new promises that the opposition has brought in saying things like they would uh, remove they would stop they would remove GST they would uh, they would put uh, former Prime Minister Najib under the full force of the law so it's going to be the newspaper will probably be thicker in the next few weeks it's going to be quite, a, quite interesting I, I'm going to say this um, disclaimer 
the the NBA show does not um what was the thing I like to say the display it's impartial it's impartial yeah. it's impartial to whatever and, and, and so am I because of my uh, particular trade I mean I am a voter I cast my vote on Wednesday uh, my finger is marked but um I am I maintain my professional stance from the office as well. Mm-hmm. And I'm just saying here, uh, because it sounds heavily you know, political, like nobody really likes that. Like the NBA show does not support any party whomsoever. Uh, we here are very neutral and we support whoever wins. That, that's the case right now. Government of the day. Yeah, government of the day. Because we're, in the end of the day, we're just a pony podcast. Like we like ponies, we like horses with pastel colors and horns and wings. Oh. Yeah. There are a couple of things I have to say. Like, first of all, is uh, because I was moved to the Chinese desk in the newsroom. I hardly, uh, I have made very few appearances on the English bulletin. But yesterday, I had uh, one chance to do the bulletin once again, and I had a lot of fun doing it on uh, Kini TV. And uh, if you've watched that episode and also follow me on Twitter, you'll realize that I actually made a dare on Tuesday night before the elections, and I said that. If Pakatan Harapan takes power by any means, including that of a minority government or a simple majority, I will shave my head. <laughs> and I'm gonna keep and I'm and I am more than happy to keep that promise tomorrow because it feels amazing to be proven wrong in this kind of circumstance because it was nothing like what I expected. It was just like, wow. Oh. And I'm like Hell yeah, I want to try. I, I, I'm happy to be proven wrong in this case. And for you guys who do not know, Dan here has a l- great luscious hair. Oh, by the way, uh, you should really tell people that you got a, you took a picture with the man, man. Oh, yeah, I, I, I did pick, take a picture with uh, Tun Mahathir Muhammad uh, sometime before the polls during a press conference. And uh, I may have been the first person in the world to post a picture with him after he took his oath. Uh, after he swore his oath and had his swearing in as a seven prime minister, I don't know. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I am. But how? Okay, okay. How? How did that happen? I'm jealous of you. You. <laughs> well, I was deployed because of work. I'm a journalist. Oh God. Then I saw the opportunity and I said and I asked politely if I could take a picture with him, and uh, someone helped offer to hold the camera, and I well started a bit of a wave right there because right after me at least six other people (laughs) (laughs) i managed to stop him in his tracks and get a picture (laughs) it's like before he takes another step you know which is legendary he's a 92 year old man who walks on his own two feet with no cane no walking aid no wheelchair whatsoever he's 92 he walks like that i can't walk like that when i get out of bed in the morning (laughs) But at the same time, too, like he is a legend. Like he is the father of uh, development, development for Malaysia. Papa, Mangunan, yeah. Yes. So, like on that on that stance, there is warrant a picture. Um, I remember. Yeah. Uh, you remember, um, uh, Vincent. Uh huh. Yeah. He 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 didn't really took a picture with Mahathir, but uh, he was in the same theater with him. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I was like that one. What the. Man, I'm chilly as hell. Oh, God. I mean, the thing is that he is a real personality. He's got such a wit. And to, to have him, to hear him speak and, you know, the character he throws into his speeches is really something quite amazing for someone his age. And if you ask me, I that charisma he has. I'm 26 and I'm envying the charisma of a 92-year-old. That says a lot. You know what I mean? Like, here's the thing, here's the thing. I would compare his charisma to Barack Obama. Like uh-huh. those two people can talk, and oh yes, if they make you or if they can pull you towards their cause, that's to, that's something to say, man. Like that is just amazing. And that that's what they're good at, and they they used it to their full ability, and I think that's pretty much what contributed a lot to the victory. True, true, true that. Hey, but anywho, um, <laughs> let's get off this topic because. As much as I like to yeah. talk about <laughs> it, it's like nah. But anywho, with my week. My week's been boring. And, um, right? Just before, just just before, just before we go on. Um, by the time this episode airs, I would have probably done it already. But I'm gonna shave my head tomorrow on Sunday. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, relax, man. It's gonna be cool. I am no. I am looking forward to see myself bald because just for the just for the record, I have not cut my hair since Project C Ponycon. Wow. Yeah, like I said, you have luscious hair. Uh, for reference, go look at the picture that he took. <laughs> which is much, which 
which is much longer than it, that actually i haven't cut it since january of the year of project c pony con so like it's been over a year since i cut my hair oh wow cool i'm about to lose it all yeah. and i can't wait <laughs> i can't wait uh did anybody call you out on that uh yeah a couple of people did um but you know i'm again i'm more than happy because you know it's it's just it, there is this pleasure in being proven wrong in some cases and i do feel it all right all right so um good luck man don't forget to post a picture everybody's gonna <laughs> want to know how I, i'm thinking of going i'm thinking of going live <laughs> <laughs> you facebook facebook live stream <laughs> maybe yeah oh god that's gonna be cool set up the tripod and whatnot <laughs> Now, now, here's another thing that happened this week, okay? I bought a new phone because oh. my current one has been through a lot of... Uh, because, you know, in the newsroom, we use our phones to send fast information. And over the past few weeks, the phone that I've been using has been through a lot of damage. And uh, it's, it's it, it, it went flying across rooms as things suddenly changed and I had to make a quick move or something. Uh, it still works, but the power button is jammed and uh, it's very hard to turn on. So I figured it's time to buy a new phone. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. My SIM card don't fit in the new phone. Oh, no. So um, the trouble is that, you know, most people say, hey, just go and cut the SIM card. I can't because it's an old SIM card. I had this SIM card since 2007. And uh, I can't get it cut because if I do, it would cut the metal context. It's a bigger card. So the next the next obvious thing to do is to go to the, the telco center to get a new card. And here's the other issue is that in 2007, this card was gifted to me by one of my best friends as a birthday gift. This said friend is now married and living her own life. <laughs> Oh. And you and to get a new card, you need to present the identity documents of the owner of the card. Oh. It's gonna be a while before I can get it, but till then, I'll be walking around with a phone without a SIM card and a old phone with a broken power button. Oh gosh, no! <laughs> I'm still on my Akimbo, like you know. <laughs> <laughs> what phone did you bought, man? I got Xperia XC. Ah, all right, all right, all right. So, anywho, um, on to me. Uh, my week has been rather dull. Dull. <sighs> really? Yeah, really, man. Like, uh, besides the whole voting thing, um, let's see. Um, I, I say the new thing that happened with me is that, ah, uh, God, I, I, I picked up Magic the Gathering again. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. But, okay, here's the thing. Um, the shop has this thing called the League, um, Magic League. So, um, how this works is every time when... For a second, I thought you are talking about League of Legends. No, man. Like, no. <laughs> uh, but anyway... Um... Okay, okay. Good, good, good. Now that we're on the same page. Yeah. Good. So, I'm going to explain this. I'm going to explain this. So, anyway, um, every new block that comes out, and what I mean by block is um, new booster packs that come out, uh, Wizard of the Coast is doing this thing called um, Insert Name of Booster Pack Here League. So, mm-hmm. the rule is, you buy three packs from the shop, you open them and build a deck. And now, you fight with okay. everybody who is participating in the shop once. And how... Sounds a bit like Mini Masters. It, it is Mini... What was it called? Uh, sealed. Um, I think... Tiny Draft. Not really Tiny Draft, but you... Mini Masters. I, I, I don't really remember what it's called, but anyway... Um, more draft <laughs> <laughs> but you have your you, you you buy three packs you build a deck out of all the cards that are in there and then uh-huh. you fight with every participant in the shop that's participating in the league uh 10 win but correct me if yeah. i'm wrong that if you have a deck like that that means uh you you're playing with that's not a complete deck right um the rule set for this one is a minimum of 30 Oh, you mean you don't have to play with all the cards? No, you don't have. You you can build a deck oh, with a minimum of 30 cards. Um, 40 if you want to go higher and so on. So, um... Uh, can you pull lands or must you draft the lands? Oh, no. Uh, it's... Uh, lands are free. Like, basic lands are free. If you get special lands, dual color lands and whatnot, well, lucky you. But what about, um... Wastes? Because I last time I knew you had to actually draft waste into your deck. You can't actually uh, pull it from the land bank. Waste. Um, I'm not hundred percent sure. Like, uh, this block doesn't has waste, so I got no idea. Okay, okay, that makes sense now. Yeah. So from why? So you are playing strictly within the block. Within the block and within the three packs that you got. Ah, uh, okay. So okay. it makes that that makes yeah. a lot more sense. And it makes the game more balanced and balanced and fair. Now it's a matter of skill and understanding. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Uh, and luck. You, yes, true. And luck. <laughs> so 
after three losses, you are allowed to buy a booster pack to, you know, top up whatever you need just to see if your deck can stabilize. Ah. Um, once per week, you're allowed to buy one pack for the league. And after three losses, you're allowed to buy one pack f- just to, you know, uh, get better cards to improve your deck and whatnot. So it's... Can you continue to play in the league uh, with, the, with, the, with the new pack and add it to your deck? Yes, for a month. Ah, okay. So, the, so there, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that the this thing involves logging the decks and making sure that you don't inject cards into it. Oh, uh, yeah. It, no, it's basically this: you are not trust system. You are not allowed to bring that deck out of the shop. Like it stays in the shop. Oh, so like you, you, there's like a little box with your name on it, kind of thing. Yeah, they give you. They even there. give you a box. Like they give you a box, and you write your name down. You write your card down to see how many people you fought and whatnot. And all of those things are in the shop. Like, even if you get those rare plane walkers and whatever, it stays in the shop in your box. Uh, then what about, um, is this logged into the DCI system? Yes. If I'm not 100% sure if it's logged fully for the DCI, like um, how you enter FNM and whatnot. I'm not 100% sure I need to ask my shopkeeper about that. But um, from what I can tell, probably. I mean, quite simply, do you present your DCI card before playing? No, okay. Uh, when you participate in the league, uh, they give you a card. Uh, write down your name, write down your DCI number, and your opponent uh, win loss record and whatnot. Ah, uh, that. Yeah. So it's basically that. So your DCI number does track. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, and mean playing not playing. Is there an entry fee or just buy the buy the packs and you're in kind of thing? There is an entry. fee. Fee. like uh, the three pack thing is its own well you're buying three packs the entry fee for my shop is 18 ringgit so um, my total bill was 57 in total okay but it's fun like it's fun like you can play as hardcore as you want or as casual as you want yeah I think that's a really interesting way to play yeah because it's like putting everybody on the same plane, like playing level because you're not building a pure deck to go to the meta you're just playing for fun. You're just playing with whatever you have in your deck. Now it's like how well you understand the game. Yeah, and then I mean, uh, and again, there's still the luck factor, you know. <laughs> well, that's why you build your deck to make it work. Like you, you try. It's a, it's a very it's a very highly variated cube in a way, right? Kind of, but it's fun. It's it's fun. Like I don't mind it. Like it's one of those things where for fifty seven ringgit local. I can do my deck. I can play it as much as I want and I can do as hardcore as I want. Like, my friend who is playing with me in this league, Mm -hmm. he's going all in. He's going hardcore. He's losing games just to buy packs. That's a smart way of mucking with the meta. (laughs) But not really, because why? You're just... It's it's smart to to be able to use it to to use... Lost the JPEG to influence your deck. Yeah, but at the same time too, <laughs> you're spending money. Well, yeah, this guy wants to win that way through the no, bank. No, no, um, he's not. He's not. He's not. Okay, fine. <laughs> but um, I actually kind of want to play this now. It sounds interesting because it really decreases the kind of commitment you needed from Friday Night Magic. Oh yeah, you can. Uh, from what my um, shopkeeper tells me, you can come whenever the shop is open and. Just play with anyone who is there at the time and who's joining the league. It's very casual in that sense where you're just playing for fun. There's no... Um... Is there an end game though? Yes, there is. I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but the league is uh, happening for one month. Uh, in my in my shop's case, it's one month and one week because um, of the recent election, we didn't get any new booster coming in. So there's no booster to buy so on. So my shopkeeper is going to extend ah. it for one week. So anyway... Um, for one month, you'll fight. So, sorry, the person with the highest wins will get more booster packs. So, yay, right? Ah. Um, we're not sure how many well, booster packs per person yeah. and whatnot. So, top three will get booster packs. And the bottom four will get a pack and a lucky draw for a playmat. Ooh. That's what my shop is doing. I'm not 100% sure how your shop will do it. I haven't been to a magic shop. As I said, like, you know, the <laughs> magic shop I used to kind of frequent has the, the guy kind of got bought over by this, uh, you know, Amway's multi-level marketing uh, thing and he turned his 
he turned his into he shut down his uh, card shop business and turned it into one of those come here learn how to get rich quick scheme no. places. So uh, yeah, I mean, the, so we lost our hangouts. I'm sure there's other places like other places. There are, but you know that that kind of place had that you know that kind of place had the. The thing about that, what I liked about that place, first of all, I knew the guy. Second is that, like, that this pile of those cards that nobody wanted after the Friday Night Magic. You go there and you start building huge decks out of it. Like, I used to go there and build... That's not a word! ...tier decks. And, you know, it, it starts to have this... Um, people start playing pauper a lot when we do that because oh, yeah. we just want to see how broke we can get. Like, how broke... <laughs> and then we go out, go to, like, that, go to all the websites, just find out how you can build a $1 deck or some crap like that. It's really as dirt cheap as you can make yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> no, but um, I do recommend if you guys have home played Magic before, I do highly recommend playing um this league because it's really casual. Like you don't really need to go all in. There's no pressure for you to go all in. There's nobody. Yeah, yeah like it's just for fun. Like you're just playing for funsies. You're just playing a deck that you don't control the outcome. That that that's something I really need because I uh. Going and getting my ass kicked at Friday Night Magic was like, okay, first few times is like, I'm in this to learn, I'm in this to be a better player. And then after about the fifth time you get beaten, I'm like, you know what? Um, to deal 10 damage to target player, deal to myself, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I understand, man, I understand. It's one of those scenarios. I mean, I've, I've done these funny things. I'm like, I'm a bit of a joker. Like, when I play games like Rainbow Six Siege, I play, you know, silly modes like Strat Roulette. So I've done this thing where, I've played with people and we just do this kind of real uh, Iron Man kind of uh, magic where, you know, you just pull this guy down to one hell, revive him and then beat the That's sh- not a word! out of him again. <laughs> like, it was like, you, you, because, you know, the beauty of magic is the two words, target something, target creature, target player, target artifact. And, you know, when it comes to deal, it damage to target player, you hit yourself for the heck of it. <laughs> you, you know, and, Get, target player gains five life. Okay, give you so I can beat you again. <laughs> <laughs> but still, but still, yeah. Um, but 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 that's it. Like um, besides Magic: The Gathering, um, nothing much. Like um, uh, you know what? There's nothing much. Like I can say that I have to say that wow, we. That's what I've been doing with my week. Um, yeah. So nothing much besides Magic: The Gathering. So, yeah, th- that's been my week, Magic the Gathering. Huh, well, I mean, quite interesting to see this new format. I'm kind of, like, interested in it, though. It'll be a while before I pay another visit to a card shop because, ah, oh, man, things are going to be so busy over the next few weeks. Oh, yeah, man, like, I, and I understand. And I do recommend you going to any Magic sh- uh, magic card shop just to try this out because it's fun, it's relaxing. Uh, but I do hope that you get uh, you get a good community to play around with because sometimes some shops, their community is not fun. I mean, some of them are fun, but I've been to shops where fun is at the expense of others. Like, I'll give you this really funny example that happened once is that I was playing against this seasoned player, Friday Night Magic, and uh, I was playing a black-white deck against his uh, tricolor. I think it was blue, orange, and white. And... Uh, sorry, blue, red, and white. Yeah. Where the heck did the orange come from? This stupid Kuda orange. Uh, the the thing is that he, I, I was playing that. I I didn't expect to see a lot of people use color specific targeting cards in their decks because I thought it was stupid when I first started playing. Because heck, you don't know your opponent. But then you know when I realized the importance of a sideboard, and obviously this guy I was playing against knew the importance of having a very good sideboard in his hands that he could swap out to between matches. So um, I played down a I played down a token character and I kind of buffed it up to a to, to a good uh, it was a black uh, token character I can't remember what the black tokens are called but I buffed it up pretty damn nicely and uh, I decided to use a weaker character to take a swing at him during one of my turns and uh, everyone because you see this game stretched for so long everyone was done with their games they were surrounded and we, we they they just surrounded our table everyone was staring at our game and then they were like Daniel are you sure you want to do that. You know, if he takes, if he, yeah, he's got a, he's got a creature with trample. He's gonna knock that down. And he's gonna come after you. You know, yeah, you know, you, do you want to put the, do you want to make sure and put the, the more buffed creature there? He'll absorb all of it and take it, and you know, take the damage, and nothing will come to you, and he, the, the creature even survives. I'm like, oh, should it? Then he looks at me. I'm gonna give you a chance. Okay, you can take that move. <laughs> so I was like, okay, 
So I untap my untap the the original card I want to attack with. I put forward the token, and he slams down, and goes boom, instant destroy target black creature. I'm like, oh, sh-. that's not a word. Sometimes you need to go with a gut, man. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, okay, fine. That was a good laugh. We all had a good laugh, and as long as you don't do that too many times, it's fun. Yeah, true, true. But here's the thing. I mean, um, my my sh- my shop uh recently had this thing where. We had trouble players and whatnot, and the shop owner says like you, the um, audience, the spectators, they should not comment on the game. They should just keep quiet and just watch. Uh, yeah, that was one of the issues of my shop. Nobody shuts up. Mm-hmm. Everyone comes in there. Why'd you do that, oh, man? Like, oh, stupid! Ah, well, this comes out. <laughs> yeah, but it's not, it's like there's there's a thing like with uh with my shop. Like, there's a big no no. Like, no, it's it's. Not even my shop. Like, it is uh, stated in the quote unquote rule book or code of conduct where if somebody's having a match, you do not go commenting or teaching unless said person is asking for it. I mean, the thing is that they respect it for the most part, as in they don't do it. The trouble is, this match was going on for 20 minutes after everyone finished their matches. They just wanted to close the shop up. <laughs> so uh, they kind of got impatient with us. Okay. All right. But well, still, but well, still. Uh. But anyway, um, that's the show for this week. I do hope that you enjoy the, whatchamacallit, um, show. Our adventures. Yay. So anyway, if you guys at home have any questions concerns or suggestions for the show you can contact us at mbsshowgmail.com you can also reach us on the twitters this show's twitter account is at MBS show. my personal twitter account is at norman sanzo and then where can the good people find you uh you can find me on um <clears throat> let's start with twitter and twitter.com slash st pinky s-t-p-i-n-k-i-e um i'm barely on facebook these days because uh well Toxic people hang on Facebook nowadays. So yeah, and especially in the light of what's just happened to Malaysia, everyone's a keyboard warrior. So I'm sticking to it. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm I'm saying this in all seriousness. People have become such keyboard warriors on Facebook that I'm kind of like staying away from it for a while. So if you want to reach me, try Twitter, try Discord, try something else. Just please don't try Facebook because I'm just trying to stay away from it. It's becoming a very very dark place right yeah, now. All right. And um, it, I you can find uh, some of our other stuff like um, Project C Ponycon, which I work on. You can uh, go to cponycon.com or prefix it with Discord, YouTube, or Twitter to get to the page that you want. Like twitter.cponycon.com takes you to our Twitter. Uh, discord.cponycon.com takes you to our Discord channel. And uh, yeah, that's uh, what I have. You can also watch me on Kini TV, my episode on Friday. I don't know when I'm going to get to do this again. <laughs> But uh, yep, that's where you can find me. All right, then. All right, then. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and switch the radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on live dot com. Uh, links are in the show notes. And also, we got this show called the Ambition Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you will catch me, Silver Quill, Sapphire Heart Song, reviewing e pony episode, comics, movies, and discussion about ponies. And sometimes we like to talk about other things than ponies. Then, did you know the movie called Kung Pao Enter the Fist? Uh, yes, I've heard of it, but I haven't watched it. Go watch it. It's a really funny show because we talk about I've it. I've heard that it's hell of a funny. We talk yeah. about it. Go listen to that one if you want to see how much we loved it. Okay. <laughs> Sounds interesting. I mean... I've got so much to catch up on. I, you know, this election has taken so much out of me. I am six episodes behind on MLP. I think I've got so much to catch up on. Oh, same here, man. Same here. But anywho, uh, that is the MBH Review and Discussion Podcast. Yes. What is wrong with you people? I just said don't reach me on Facebook and my Facebook rings. <laughs> You should get your phone. But anywho, if you like to... It is muted. How did this get past the mute? No idea. <laughs> if you would like to... Re- oh, cause this, cause this Crystal Empire record. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let me try to finish this so you can get on to what you need to <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Anyway, oh, oh boy. Mm. I remember way back when, when we were all serious business, business, business. Now, we're just rolling with it. <laughs> <laughs> 
But anywho, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, and exclusive and deleted content, and also a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lurker Cat, Star Stream, Master of Lag, Amy, Mark, Charles, Lucky Knight, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You have been really, really awesome. So, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I'm Daniel Anthony. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the show. See ya. Okay, thanks. Bye.